Good morning. Good morning. As most of you know, I took last week and I'm moving. And I was one day sitting there and the movers were there and I was absolutely exhausted. So one of the movers said, you think you'll ever move again? I immediately said, I sure will. One of these days I'm going to move on. Took him a second, but he caught it. Isn't it great, though, when we move on up, we're taking so little with us. We don't have Amen. to plan ahead. We to, if we're not already planning ahead, it's too late. Yeah. Through the years, there has been a reoccurring criticism about my preaching, and that is this. Brother Roger, you don't preach enough hellfire and brimstone. Well, you were correct. And I've thought about that. Now and then it becomes necessary, and I do. But overall, and I think it's because I have seen so much and know so much about God's grace and God's love. Through the years, I just can't complain about the love that God has given me. His love and His grace have been so much greater that I can't even compare it to what heartache or problems I've seen because of the grace that He's given me. So this morning, if you're looking for our Herald Health fire and brimstone message, you've come to the wrong place. For some weeks now, we have been working off the last verse of 1 Corinthians 13, and most of you know 1 Corinthians 13 is a great part of chapter. It starts and ends talking about and explaining what love is. One of our problems in America today is that we only have one word. For love. The Greeks were a lot smarter than we are, and they had several words for love, like uh, the word uh, sexual love, and they had a friendship love, and, and last but not least, was agape love. And often we say love, and the person hearing it takes it like they want to hear it, instead of sometimes the way we meant it. If there was ever a word that is more misused, misexpressed, misunderstood, I don't know of one that would be more so than the word love. Maybe it is why God took an entire chapter and said, this is what love is. And he said, this is what my love is to you. This is what it is. Not all the other lives, this love I have for you. And it's not just any love, it is the ultimate love, God's love. It is agape love. Now let me say, no one knows more about love than God does. He is the ultimate authority on love. You think you know love, well, unless you know God, you don't know love because He is love. I don't know whether I should say this or not. Years ago, somebody said, well, you and Judy fell in love at first sight. And I said, no, I fell in lust at first sight. But I don't know it is love. But guess what? Later on, after troubles and heartaches and difficulty and kids, it becomes love. And if you survive those things, you loved. And if you don't survive those things, then it was probably lust. Can I have an amen? amen. Which brings us to this morning's message. I want to talk uh, in 1 John 4.11, if you'll stand with me as I read our text. Now, John, one of his epistles, starts off by saying, Beloved, 
Now, when he says beloved, he's referring to Christians. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has seen God at any time. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. We have seen and testified that the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. We have come to know and have believed that the love which God has for us, God is love. And the one who abides in love abides in God and God abides in him. By this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but uh, perfect love casts out fear because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God and hates his brother, he is a liar. The one who, uh, the one who does not love his brother whom he has seen cannot love God whom he has not seen. And this commandment we have from him, that the one who loves God should love his brother also. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this day. Father, but more than anything, we thank you for your love, because all things flow from that love. Even the things that we don't like flows from that love, and they could be so much worse if your love wasn't so involved. Father, thank you. And I pray that love would touch someone this morning and draw them into your grace and come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Father, thank you for the many years given me so much love. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Because God is love, agape love, his love cannot be contained, it cannot be limited, and it cannot be confined. It cannot even be explained other than what he explains it. He poured out his perfect love on mankind. Oh, we look at John 3, 16. Most familiar verse in all the Bible, and yet do we hear what God has to say. For God so loved agape, the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal, everlasting, forever life. Let me repeat that. For God so loved the world that he gave, he did not, he was not forced, he gave, and he gave, or another way of putting it, he poured out his love in giving his only begotten son, Jesus, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal God's love did not stop there. Now hold it. You would think, isn't that enough? No, it didn't stop there. He was, he was not finished with giving. He gave his only begotten son, but he wasn't finished. Jesus is the gift that just keeps on giving. Amen. Amen. Nor Will he ever be finished giving? Now, brother and sister, let me pause a moment. I'm hearing this music this morning, and there's some good music coming off this day. And I see some of you with a smile from ear to ear, and some of you going, oh. We are in church, we are in God's house, and we're talking about love. So there should be this, this glorious event that I'm in God's house. I have the strength. God, give me the love to be here this morning. Yeah. Amen. So 
we will proceed. John 14, John 14, 15. Hear these words. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper that he may be with you forever. That is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it does not, uh, does not see him or know him, but you know him because he abides with you and will be in you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have eternal life. He wasn't through. When Jesus ascended to the Father, the Father and Jesus poured out the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, and He indwells the Christian. Yeah. When does He indwell the Christian? The moment I become a Savior, the moment I believe a, a saved, I have the Holy Spirit indwelling in me. So He keeps giving. Keeps on giving. The Holy Spirit was promised to mankind when Jesus was transcended back to the Father. So when Jesus arrived, oh, now hear this story. Jesus arrives in heaven and he sits down at the right hand of the Father. Now I'm paraphrasing this, you understand, but Jesus punches the Father and says, hey, we got a promise to keep. And the Father says, yes, we do. I'm paraphrasing, okay? <laughs> and the Father says, let's pour out the paraclete, is what he's called the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity, the paraclete, is poured out on mankind. Ooh, he loves us so much. The word paraclete means uh, advocate or helper. It has the idea of a defense attorney. Attorney. So he is always there helping me through everything I go through. He is not only beside me, but now he is in me, helping me. He is my attorney 24 7. Now you say, well, the, man, I can't imagine having an attorney by my side 24-7. Man, the cost would be unbelievable. The cost was unbelievable. Amen. <laughs> Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. I accepted that and the Holy Spirit is my advocate, yeah. my attorney. 24-7 yeah. is with me, in me. Yeah. Wow. He comes alongside and advises and comforts. He doesn't just come alongside and advise me. He comforts me when I'm going through difficulty and troubles and heartaches. He's there. He comforts me. Wow. God loved me so much that he keeps on giving. Wow. Where did he give? Well, he gives when I'm on stage. He gives. And let me tell you where he gives most. From that chair to here. That doesn't look far, does it? It is a long way from there to here. When I'm up here with my foot in my mouth, the Holy Spirit's going, we got this. <laughs> Amen. He keeps on what? Giving. Give Just keeps on giving. Holy Spirit. Wow. But you look at John, 1 John 4.4. 4. 1 John, all the way back in the door. Well, I'll get First John 4.4 4, You are from God little children and have overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Amen. Don't overlook that. You need to memorize that. Greater is he who is in you than he is in the world. The Holy Spirit which is in me, which dwells in me, is greater than the devil out there in the So he keeps on giving. Now, repeat after me. That is good stuff. That is good stuff. Some years ago, there was a best-selling book called Love.
love is a choice. But the number one best-selling book is the, called the Bible, and it also talks about love is a choice. God chose to love us. Man, I don't see anything in this congregation worth loving. But God chose to love us in spite of ourselves and says, I love you. Let me tell you what agape love says. I, now hear me. Agape love says, I love you and you can't make me not love you. <coughs> I love you and you can't make me not love you. I believe with all my heart that you have to have children to be able to understand why are so many parents born? <laughs> when that child comes up to you and says, Mom, Dad, I don't like you anymore, you go so well. <laughs> what does it change? <laughs> Nothing. I still love you anyway. In fact, I love you more that you're going through this difficulty in your life. I love you. I may kill you, but I love you. <laughs> love is a choice. Agape says, I love you, and you can't make me not love you because I choose to love you. Another verse I want you to look at is Romans. Romans 5. God demonstrates his own love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by his blood, we have been saved from the wrath of God through him. For if, while we were yet enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son, much more... Having been reconciled, we have been saved by his life. You notice how many times you can add more and more and more. Do you get it? And more. So he loves us and he continues to love us. That is because God chose to love us. And we have the freedom to choose to love him and believe that Jesus that God sent his only begotten son, Jesus, because of that love, he sent his son, because of that love, he sent the Holy Spirit. <laughs> now, why did he send the Holy Spirit? He sent Jesus to die for our sins, and he did. And we accept that, and we are saved. And now comes the Holy Spirit to stamp a seal on us and say to him that's in the world, that guy, is, that woman is saved. See the seal of the Holy Spirit that lives in him. He's saved. I am sealed by God. So he sent his only begotten son. Here's the Holy Spirit and I am sealed forever. Amen. How long am I sealed? How long forever is forever? Can I get an amen? Come on. Amen. amen. I am sealed. That is because God chose to love us as only he can. At this point, let us return to what God tells us love is. Some years ago, the story is told about a, a a famous actor that read the 23rd Psalms out in public. When he was finished, everybody applauds for the great job. Every word was pronounced correctly, not like the sermon. And the old, there was an old preacher there, and he was asked also to read the 23rd Psalms. After he got through, there was not a dry eye in the house. What made the difference? One knew the words, the other knew the shepherd. Amen. To know love, you have to know the shepherd. Amen. With that in mind, hear the words of 1 Corinthians 13. 
afresh this morning as we look at 1 Corinthians 13. Let's, let's start there. If I speak with the, with the tongue of men and of angels but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong or a singing singer. If I have the gift of prophecy and know all the mysteries and all the knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. And if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned but do not have love, the prophets may fill it. Words, just words. I have to throw this in, ladies. If that young man comes along and says, I love you, and looks you in the eye and says, I love you, you need to be sure that it's more than just words or lust. Amen. Verse 4. Love is patient. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag and is not arrogant. It begins to tell us what love is. Really is when God says love is, love is patient, love is kind, that is not jealous, love does not brag, is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly, it does not seek its own, is not provoked, does not take, uh, uh, does not take into account a wrong suffered, does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. The idea is that love is here to stay and everything else is temporary. All right, this is true. But if there are gifts of prophecy, they will be done away. If there are tongues, they will cease. If there, are, if there is knowledge, it will be done away. For we know in part and prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will be done away. When I was a child, I used to speak like a child, think like a child, reason like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. But now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I will know fully, just as I also have been fully. Paul is saying in this life there are things that we need, but we will not always need them because now prophecy is incomplete at the best. Knowledge is always changing, even us. We are always changing. We were once a child, now we're an adult. Hopefully we think like an adult, which brings us to Paul's God's point. But now, Faith, hope, love. Abide these three, but the greatest of these is love. Amen. Now we need faith, hope, love, but there is coming a time when the unclear will be clear and we will no longer need faith and hope. When that time comes, only love will be standing alone, supreme. And remember, God is love, but until then, we need faith and hope. Again this morning, I would like to repeat Dr. Wearsby when he says, Faith is grounded in the reality of the past. Hope is looking to the reality of the future. Without faith, there is no hope. Without hope, there is no faith. Christians are people of faith and hope. Now hold it. Wait on it. If faith is the reality of the past and hope is the reality of the future, love is present. Amen. Yes! Amen! Amen. Faith is past. Hope is coming. Guess when love is? Now. Love is always going to be 
stone wall that I cannot remove because somebody I used to live with put it on the wall. It will not come down, so the new owners are going to get it. <laughs> and it says every day is a gift. That is why they call it the present.
But because if I love you enough, I will give you my best. God so loved this agape love that he gave his very best. So his love had to be equal to his gift. Are we together? Yes. Now, let me tell you, some translations say when it's talking about for God so loved the world, it can be translated that God gave his unique, his unusual, his special, one-of-a-kind gift.